scrolling Netflix, I Am A Stalker comes up. I've heard of the show I Am A Stalker on Netflix for a minute, but I'm like, ah, I don't know how much I care about stalking. I don't know. But I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't watch a lot of TV shows. So I'm like, ah, whatever. But I don't know what happened. I'm like, I'm gonna watch some of these. I'll let this play. I think I was like middle of the night trying to fall asleep or something. I'm like, what am I gonna play? Obviously scary shit. <laughs> Get your brain full of chemicals for your bedtime page. Good day. So anyway, I put on I Am A Stalker and I guess I started watching a few episodes. I watched, I think most of the first season. Definitely a pattern. Now this pattern, I've noticed that I've been noticing it. I'm like, why do I suddenly think everyone's autistic? <laughs> like, what's that about Paige? Why do you think everyone's autistic? You know, think about that. Are you having issues Paige? Are you having weird stuff? Do you need to take a minute? But the more I know that I'm really freaking good at knowing what autism is and trust myself and go, Paige, you're so smart, shut up. I instead go, oh, Paige, you are just right. And of course I am surrounded by people that I think are autistic or have ADHD because I'm autistic and have ADHD and my friends are neurodivergent. The people that I vibe with the best are neurodivergent. They just happen to be. Those are just the people that my brain gets along with best. I'm also a dance teacher and I'm thinking like, oh my God, why are so many of these kids autistic? And I find myself being like, I think half of our studio is freaking autistic, man. And the other half have ADHD. <laughs> I'm like, why do I think like every kid here is autistic or has ADHD? What the heck? I'm like telling the director. So here's another kid I think actually is autistic. And she's like, hey, this is a lot of kids, bro. No, but it makes sense. Are neurotypicals dancers? No, who's gonna dance? People that need to move their body. <laughs> people that are good with music. People that need to connect in that way. People that need to move. <laughs> people with autism and ADHD are dancers. You will not find a lot of neurotypicals within the dance community. Also, my job is literally autism related. <laughs> I'm, I do autism shit for a living. <laughs> so regardless, I'm watching the show. In like episode whatever, I'll find it. One of the guys says, I'm autistic. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I think thought so. The pattern that I was seeing was that, first of all, a lot of the stalkers were men. They were also autistic. Whether that was explicitly said or something I just noticed, not all of them were, but an alarming percentage enough so that I was like, holy fuck, I didn't finish the season because it was making me angry. And I was like, I need to make a video about this and stop watching the show because it's making me mad. And I want to tell you about why, <laughs> why this makes me mad. It doesn't make me mad in the way that you might think it's making me mad. You might be like, oh my God, Paige, Ugh. maybe Paige is mad because it's like showing autism in a negative light and being like, autism is bad because it means stalking. And maybe that's why Paige is mad because she's like, oh. that's not why Paige is bad. I think some people can get mad about stuff like that. But these are just like facts. Obviously the facts are influenced by something that makes it a fact, right? But it's still a fact, right? Or whatever. The fact of the show, I highly doubt if there was a large population and most of them weren't autistic. I feel like if the show then specifically chose like the autistic people, it's fucked. I don't know if I can prove that or disprove that. But what I can say is it makes sense that most of the stalker men were autistic. And that's what I wanted to talk about today and why I was like, I can't do this. My nervous system is on fire. I can't do this anymore. Because I think there's a correlation between teaching our autistic boys and teaching society that autistic boys cannot understand boundaries and social regulations and so therefore they don't apply. I am talking specifically about the passes that men get in life on top of the fact that they are disabled men. I need to give a shout out to this week's sponsor. Thank you so much to Care Of, the sponsor of this week's video. I'm looking outside my window and there is a gaggle of high schoolers suddenly marching along the road. <laughs> That's very uneasy, why? Friggin' teenagers are scary, man. Nothing is scarier than teenagers. Care of! Y'all heard me talk about care of probably 18 times. We love them over here. If you are going to get supplements, if you're a supplement kind of gal, if you need that in your life, in your body, there is no cuter way of doing that than with care of. You got me personally at personalized individual packaging that comes to my house and I don't have to go to the grocery store. Oh my god, my care of packaging today says a group of porcupines is called a prickle. That's fantastic. A prickle. Who'd have thunk? That's perfect. 
To get started, you take a quiz, and the quiz helps you understand what kind of supplements you might need or like in your life. I've recently retaken my quiz because, you know, a girl changes and grows up, my needs might change. I got some of the same supplements, like whey protein, because you know, we trying to build muscle, we're trying to go to the gym. I got collagen in a vanilla oat creamer, a coffee creamer thing, okay. <laughs> New one, it's called ashwagandha. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It is for stress and focus, huh? Cranberry for urinary tract health, hello. Veggie collagen for skin and vitamin C and D because those are important in general. They're good for your immune system and your bones and living in Canada. And my supplements come in little packages every day that say something different on them and have my name on them. Before I used to write the date on the package so I'd know if I take my vitamins that day. Whoa, birds! Oh my God, filming in front of my window is not okay because I am very distracted. <laughs> The lighting is just so nice. I love natural lighting and the birds. They're very cool. Anyway, now I don't have to write the date on them because Care Of has an app where you can track if you take your vitamins every day or not on the app. I think it's cool to also track your mood and your energy levels and how you're feeling when you take your vitamins. Because I find when I'm consistent and I'm taking them every day for like a week, I feel so good. <laughs> I don't feel tired, I feel energetic, I feel focused, I feel motivated, and I feel like done. In so many ways of the word, I feel more complete. Like I finished things and I can sit in that. Does that make sense? <laughs> that feeling of relaxation, is that what that is? <laughs> Care of is a subscription service that brings personalized vitamins to your doorstep every month in a 30 day supply in this cute little Pez dispenser like thing made with thoughtfully sourced good research backed ingredients. So you feel comfortable about what's going into your body. I know I do. Hopefully you do too. I've got my care of jugs over here by my coffee station so I can put my protein into a smoothie like I have every morning or the creamer into a coffee. It's pretty good. To get started on your vitamin and mineral journey, go down and take care of's quiz below. There's a link in the description as always, and you can find out what they recommend. Click on the link below and use my code PageLeal, my name, PageLeal, for 50% off your first order with care of for half off. Go do it. The whey protein is so good. Both flavors now, I've had vanilla and chocolate. It's so good. I just want to eat it. Thank you so much again to Kara for sponsoring today's video. Again, thank you for partnering with me and thank you guys so much for watching this and for clicking the links down below so that brands want to partner with me. It's really cool and nice and everyone's really dope. So anyway, let's just go to the rest of the video page. Shut up. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, bye. I've been watching Family Guy since I was six. I never found it offensive. I found it hilarious. And I think that it touches on stuff that I'm like, good, thanks for doing that. There's something that comes with being raised a girl that also makes you raised a people pleaser, right? There are a lot of places where girls are afraid because they are girls. And so we're taught to do things to please men in order to not be afraid. We're now being taught other things that are better and healthier and make more sense. That is one thing that men are not really taught. I think one big thing that men are of course taught is like, hide your emotions and don't be emotional and be a strong man. Which is something that autistic men don't get as much when they're recognized as autistic. We're gonna talk about how autistic boys can grow into autistic men who are stalkers. We're gonna talk about why there is a good percentage of autistic men that end up stalking women and stalking people and making that a problem. I'm also gonna empathize. It's not 100% because they're a man. I mean, they're also autistic. I'm also autistic and I understand a lot of the feelings that they're experiencing, which I'll explain also. So this isn't just a like roast autistic men party because like I don't want to roast anybody, but I do want to roast the concept of letting autistic men escape boundaries because we think that they're not smart enough to handle them. They are, we are. Men are not dumb. Men are not stupid. They do know better. They can do better. They know how to. You're just being manipulated. Oh, you know, that's just how boys are. Nope. That's just boys, they're dumb. Nope, he chose to. He is actively choosing to not put in the effort because he has said, nope, it's not worth it. You're not worth it, this isn't worth it, I'm not going to. You know, all I have to do is laundry. I have to cook for him, he doesn't know how. I, I do with this because he doesn't know how. Or when he does it, he does it poorly. You're being manipulated. Men are not dumb. This is why men think they're smarter than women because the patriarchy has allowed men to manipulate women for so long, emotionally. And the men have been acknowledging it this whole time. They've been seeing it this whole time and still doing it.
sorry. She's dealing with her own daddy and mommy issues right now. Trying to remain unbiased. There is no unbiased. There is none. Point number two, autistic men are not dumb. Completely scrap the idea that disabled people cannot, should not, do not need to follow the law or do not need to follow boundaries or do not need to have respect for people. Disabled people do not get a pass. Disabled people are not incapable of learning it. His mental age is two. Shut up. No, it's not. I promise you, you can teach him how not to harass women. I promise you, he knows what's right and wrong. Don't think otherwise. <laughs> There's a clip on Family Guy. I don't know if it's offensive and if people don't like it and if I'm gonna get canceled for it. <laughs> There's a scene where Peter's in the woman's bathroom and he's kicking open stalls and he kicks open a stall. The woman's like, ah! and he's like, sorry, our word, I'm wrong. And then she's like, oh, oh, that's okay. And then he does it again. And the next girl's like, ah! and he's like, sorry. Ah! And she's like, oh, you're just curious. Come here. You know, I'll show you how it works. I didn't think it was offensive or anything. I thought it was important and good at showing that we let disabled men have passes. Anyone who's raising an autistic boy, he's not dumb. I don't care what you think about how much he knows or thinks. It's more than you think it is. And you still have a responsibility to raise a good man. So do that, please. Okay, I'm getting weird. My number third point is that this is specifically an autism issue. Number one thing about autism is not understanding social norms and social cues. And so when it comes to things like stalking, it's almost seen as like, I can see why that's an autism thing because stalking, you know, you don't know when someone doesn't like you. You don't know how much is too much, how close is too close or that like they're uncomfortable. There's lots of like subtle nuances that autistic people may not see. I think we need to change like the wording of the idea that autistic people don't read like social cues and social norms or don't like whatever get them super well because that's not what it really is. Think of autistic brains as they make so much more fucking sense than everyone else's brain, okay? Autistic people recognize that each person is individual. We recognize that there is no one universal happy expression. And so when someone does a happy expression, like, it looks different to every person. Every person shrugs means something differently. Some person does this as like a, I don't know, some person does this as like a, <sighs> whatever, I'm just saying. However, we are really good at recognizing patterns and noticing small details. Put those two together and if you have a one specific person that you interact with that you can read and learn and understand, they become predictable. Even if there's a disconnect between understanding that like they're not in love with you because there is that as well. I mean, we'll talk about that in my next point. <laughs> I can read certain things about certain people and their faces, their mouths twinge ever so slightly when they lie to me. I know you're lying. Why? Because I know who you are and people are patterns. Am I alone on that? Because I don't think I am. Autistic people sound off down below. I hope that we can agree-ish on that. There are obviously some things that I don't know and will never know, whatever, and I'll never catch. I can categorize a lot of expressions from a lot of my friends and even from some like random strangers because some of them are familiar. Everyone has a little change of a part of their face when they lie. So funky. Point number four, and this is a biggie, which is good because four is my favorite number. So it makes sense. I'm gonna be controversial for a second. Who, Paige Leal? I think that borderline personality disorder is like so misunderstood. I've never been diagnosed with BPD. I don't think I have BPD, but I 1 million percent think that I did or could have been diagnosed with it when, when I was like between the ages of 13 and 18. Everything I've ever read about BPD, that's how I was between those ages. Why and why am I not now? Because obviously if I'm not that way now, something changed. Maybe it wasn't BPD or maybe it was therapy and I figured it out because, so we know that it comes from trauma, which autism and childhood trauma are yin and yang. It's like heavy attachment trauma and huge emotions. It sounds like being an autistic with one or more parent that was unreliable and made you feel safe and you developed a whatever, whatever, because specifically, to do with relationships. If you are autistic and you do not have like good adults who teach you about your body and emotions and how it feels and also what love is and what is good love and what isn't 
And also that teach you to have like value and self-worth in yourself and self-confidence in yourself. There are so many layers to what makes a person have a secure attachment style with relationships they pursue. That depends on their upbringing and their parents and whatever, right? A lot of people in general don't get that. A lot of autistic people don't get that. <laughs> a lot of autistic people, a lot of autistic kids need even more help than just like typical kids when it comes to learning about their emotions and their body and their boundaries and themselves. And that doesn't happen for a lot of autistic kids. And because our emotions are so powerful, because we feel so much, and we usually don't like a lot of stuff, right? We're usually we're really picky and specific. If we find someone that we like, I become obsessed with people. Ugh! Since I was four years old, I've had like a person. And I want to say that it stopped. I'm 22 and three quarters and I'm, I'm getting better. I'm always healing and working on myself. And it's been, obviously it's going to be a journey. But I'm like, Paige, we know that we have a problem with falling in love with everybody. You have such a big, kind, loving heart and you just love people and you see the good in everybody and you fall in love with everyone. So this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna date just like a bunch of people and watch as you, you know, fall in love with none of them. Okay, do that and see how they all suck and then don't fall in love with any of them. What always happens is the first guy that I go out with, I'm like, oh, I like you, you're cool, frig, cool. okay. And I like know all the reasons why not to and all the red flags. I'm like, obviously I don't wanna date this guy, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like still really fucking sad when they don't answer. <laughs> I was talking to all of them, but I was only seeing one person for real because that's all I can do. I'm like, no one else. This is my one person apparently I've chosen. I cannot actually see anyone else. I can only see this one person. For some reason, I'm like, they're the best because I know them the most. And then he like, he's being weird. He's being distant. Paige, we know what to do. Don't chase him. Like, you know, we do not chase, we attract. Back up. And I'm like doing all the, all the good things and all the right things, right? Yeah, now we're like not talking anymore now. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm sad. And I'm like, oh my God, Paige. I feel it in my heart. How I feel is the same of how I feel with everybody. Honestly, like between the ages of 14 and 18 was when it, like, it was the worst. I had a very big relationship with my first boyfriend. We were like kids when we first knew each other and started talking. And then when we started dating, like we were still virgins. <laughs> You know, we dated for two years and even like throughout this time, he was my favorite person, you know, and I put him through a lot of shit because this was also a very like depressy time of my life. I found out I was autistic like a few weeks after we decided to start dating and he was like, oh fuck, wow, cool. <laughs> I got my hands full. And then when we broke up, I broke up with him. Mm. I was destroyed. He was like all that I could think about all the time. It was fuck. I'm so sad and heartbroken all the time. I did some stalkery things. I'm not gonna lie. A few stalkery things. My emotions were so big. It was like, I was holding back so much. After we broke up, his birthday was like a seven months later and I got my G2 like right before. And so I was like, nice. I made my brother come with me. And I'm like, Duh, duh, duh. and I parked outside of his house. I'm like, Graham, go put, go put that birthday card in his mailbox, go. And then drive away, <laughs> bad, very bad. Thank God that was like a long time ago. Him and I have since then had like even longer relationships and broken up. And then we've like talked and been like, hello, how are you? Because now thankfully I've it's been a while and I've done a lot of work. I see him in town and he'll be like with new girls or something. And we're always like, hi, do your thing, whatever. I feel completely good. I think one thing, I don't know if it's an autism thing, if it's a me thing. I don't know if I can ever like not love a person. I don't know if I can like exactly categorize what love is, but to what I think love is and what love means to me, I don't think that I ever unlove people. And I think I just love them differently. And when I see that person now, when I see him like happy and if he's with another girl and stuff, I'm like, it feels really good to see him happy. And it also, it just feels like, oh, he's grown up and look, and I was there to help him like grow up to a point that then we didn't need to be with each other anymore. It's nice to be like, oh, I'm glad that I helped to making your experience today. That makes me feel cool. And like, I'm glad that you're happy. And I'm glad that I could be part of that. 
What I'm saying and why I'm being like controversial is because I think that BPD and autism, I think BPD might be more connected to autism than we think. Are people looking at that and seeing if, if it's actually the same and just seeing if BPD is an Cause I think people need to look at that. Every girl I know that has been diagnosed with BPD later gets diagnosed with autism. Slash, I also know some people who have been diagnosed with autism who then also get diagnosed with BPD. I'm not diagnosed and I've not done shit tons of research. So if I'm wrong, please correct me down below. Please roast the fuck out of me, okay? Absolutely destroy, rip me a new asshole. If you don't know what borderline personality disorder is, the most basic way I can describe it is someone with borderline personality disorder went through trauma as a child that led to insecure attachment and heightened emotions. Those are like two of the big things, okay? And those are the two of the big things that I'm talking about today. I don't think it actually said in the I Am A Stalker show that any of them had BPD, but I think it's also like very heavily implied. I have not looked up a statistic, so I can't even say if this is a thing. Like it could be not a thing, but I mean, just thinking about it as a human person right here, right now, it would make a lot of sense to me if most people that were stalkers had BPD. And I'm also not trying to say any of this to like stigmatize autism or stigmatize BPD, but I'm just like, like who else is going to be a stalker? Someone with antisocial personality disorder? I don't know like who is the best stalker. This isn't like the stalker Olympics, who's the best stalker, but it makes sense. Could be wrong, I don't think any of them are diagnosed. Because I feel like autism and BPD are very connected, I'm just like, whatever. All of that put together, beep, bop, boop, boop, made men who, whether on purpose or just as a product of their environment by accident, thought that they were above the law and can do whatever they want and not be caught. And also that they can in fact violate another person whenever they want and that that was okay. I'm also realizing that I'm a nobody trying to do psychology. And so I want to say that right now for anyone who doesn't know I'm a nobody, I'm, I'm a nobody. I have the entire alphabet of disorders in my head. I'm a very smart person. You can like trust me pretty much, but also like know that I'm have not gone to school for 12 years. It seems to me that, it seems to me that autistic boys may need a stronger sense of like a boundary of where they end and where someone else begins. Creating that boundary and knowing where that boundary is, is so important for every autistic person, girl, boy, whatever, because needing to make that boundary is also a huge thing for people pleasers, knowing where you are and where someone else is and know that you are not in control of those things, but sometimes you need to know that this is where you stop and you cannot control those things. Not knowing that boundary can manifest in different ways. For me, it was parenting people that were full adults. For some, it's I'm gonna hover over you 24 seven because we are the same person. And sometimes, bro, I want to hover around someone 24 seven and be the same person. Here's the thing though, when someone tells me, I know in my head, like, you're not allowed to do that. And especially if someone's like, I don't want you to do that, clear, I understand in my head, those words make sense to me. If someone's like, please don't talk to me, those words make sense to me. That's where there's the difference. That's where we need to stop being like, they're autistic, they don't know. When it comes to like the people that were in jail for stalking, there was no missing, no social cue. You knew that you, there were multiple layers and layers and layers and steps of bad stuff that was going on that they continued to push for any, for no reason other than they just were like, I can. Why do they think that? We need to make sure that they stop thinking that. Raise, raise autistic boys to respect fucking saying no. Don't let autistic kids in schools or whatever, like just touch other students and be like, oh, he's aut he's autistic, he's disabled, he doesn't know. Nah, -uh. every single human being person, like if I can teach a one-year-old not to hit me, you can teach your 35-year-old adult autistic man not to grab women's butts. You can do it because it's dangerous. Because if you won't, no one else will. Because I need to clarify this all the time because some people don't know that when you talk about things in specific, you are talking about them in specific. Reminder, I'm autistic and speak in specifics. And that I'm not saying that every, every autistic man who experiences this kind of growing up is going to grow up and be a stalker. Nor am I saying that every stalker that is a man or is an autistic man. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just talking about the demographic of autistic men who are also stalkers that seems to be one to point out and make a video about. 
just ties in very passionately with how I feel about the difference of how men are raised to think and be and treat people. <laughs> My whole first thing was like autism in girls and how it's different and can be missed a lot because everyone's focusing on autism in boys. Well, I am also very interested in the idea of autism in men and women, especially too in men and women who are not diagnosed and don't know that they're autistic because that trauma manifests in some interest ways, which I have made a few videos about and I will keep making videos about. I'm very intrigued at human beings. Like, what do you think about anything that I said? Let me know, let me know. Talk about autism, swagged out, crazy, crazy stuff going on. Well, that's all that I really wanted to talk about. So I'm gonna scooch my gooch. Big thank you to Care Of for sponsoring today's video. Big thank you to you guys for watching, as always. If you like this, if you like me, you can subscribe. I hate saying that now. Thank you. Well, I will friggin' see you later, skater alligator.